I guess I'll just say at the beginning that this is the first of what we hope will be a regular series of conversations between teachers, members of the ICMTA, sharing something about what they love about the work that we do and uh, what it is that inspires us. Um, I'm Andrew Holmes. Uh, I'm a Five Rhythms teacher based in the west of England and I'm here with I'm Sue Rickards. I'm a Five Rhythms teacher and an open floor uh, teacher and I've been supporting Freedom Dance to some degree, as I think you have, Andrew, as well. Yes, I have, yes. Yeah, your delight. So let's start with something big and juicy. Um, why movement? What, what, is, what is it about movement that, that drew you or calls you or what, why are you a movement teacher? I think there's two questions there and um, for me anyway. So there's why movement and why am I a movement teacher? So uh, uh, the first one, why movement, I think is because I'm basically, I love being outside. I love uh, walking and moving like that. But I've never been much of a, um, an exercise person or, you know, I just like disco dancing way back in the day, that kind of thing. I've never been uh, sporty or anything particular. And so, um, um, and life had got a bit sedentary by the time I was 30, not very, because I was still partying every weekend and that, but a bit sedentary. And even hitchhiking is quite sedentary. <laughs> just standing there <laughs> and um and then uh I discovered movement partly as part of a drama and movement therapy course that I was on and it yeah. was like plugging me back into the mains charger you know it was like oh this is how I'm supposed to feel not this kind of perfectly fine getting on having a fine life, but this like, wow, it's good to be alive. I'm really alive, especially when we started working with the um, emotional field as well. But it was, it was a little bit, you know, like instead of being on the slightly dull sleep mode, which you, know, you can do everything with, suddenly going, oh. So it really, the experience of movement, like remembering, as soon as I started dancing, remembering. Um, yeah, it strengthened everything. And then why movement teacher? Uh, well, I don't feel like I teach movement. Uh, mm -hmm. I use movement. I use movement to teach, but I don't teach movement. And some of our colleagues really do, really, really, really do teach. You know, um, I was at one of Alex Nikiforov's classes once. And as he was breaking stuff down, I thought, you know, this is gorgeous to be taught like this teaching the actual movement which mm. I do a little bit but not much um, and I think I became a teacher um, partly because I went to dance with Gabrielle thinking let's see what's all this about Susanna and Yakov had been talking about her people were talking about and I was like let's go and see what this is about I was a bit cynical and during the course of dancing and moving with Gabrielle she, um, Lots of people were talking about the possibility of a second training coming up after Susanna and Yakov. I'm like, why would you want to do that? I just want to dance. Teaching is a whole other thing. I knew that from being a movement therapist, that uh, being the therapist and being the therapy are two very different things. So I was like, oh, I wouldn't want to be a teacher. And then something in what Gabrielle was saying hit me, it hit me like a, I had a physical reaction as if someone had taken their hand and pushed me in my chest and uh, the sentence came ready made in my head, oh shit, I'm <laughs> going to have to apply for this training. I didn't want to, I really didn't <laughs> want to, but I knew, I absolutely knew I have to apply for this training, shit. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> And I um, yeah. never looked back. Never, never, never looked back. Yeah. I love that thing that 
moves us sometimes and they're so simple that just moves us life just moves us along so there we go what about you though i bet yours is diff very different story yes do you know i used to describe myself as a as a brain on legs uh, <laughs> i managed to get through the first 29 years of my life almost without noticing that i had a body and you know i was one of those people that um kind of took in fuel <laughs> and and went to sleep and i mean you know i'm a tory and i i like the pleasures of the body i like good food and good sex and all of those things you're a too aren't you i am i'm with you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but and and good walks and you know all of that but but I'd never been a dancer and I'd never really engaged with any of that. And then um, we were going through a sticky patch in the relationship that I was in at the time. And my partner um, gave us a, a four day couples workshop. Uh, you were there, actually. I, was. I remember now. <laughs> with Yakov and Susanna Darling Khan, who are now the founders and yeah. very successful teachers of movement medicine. Um, and uh, I, I think a bit like you, there was something very sort of visceral, very kind of, oh, my God, I found something really important. And I was actually so terrified that I didn't go again for about a year. <laughs> I knew it was really going to be important. Um, so for me, so for me personally, movement is a is just a really good way of balancing the, all those other qualities that are, that are present in me like a, um, a fine mind and a strong connection with spirit it, it just provides a, a vehicle for bringing all of that down to earth in the here and now um, and into the body um, I, I often I'm often a bit <laughs> perplexed by the fact that that, that I think what I'm teaching is spiritual practice, but that I'm choosing to do it through through the physical um, rather than through any other other means. Um, yeah, that's um, that's what I that's what I would say. And 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 like you, I also had a very strong connection with Gabrielle Roth. Um, uh, again, also sort of, sort of accidental. I was a theatre director when um, when I was first dancing, and I didn't have any particular intention to to be a movement teacher. But the rhythms just became more and more compelling, and uh, I had to do something about that. I <laughs> I knew if I didn't, I would. I, 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 so I went to teach. I think to to try and bring the rhythms back into my work as a theatre director, which worked for a few years, but then eventually they won <laughs> and I stopped being a, a director. I remember being uh, part of that transition and I'm not entirely sure that you haven't really stopped being a director, I would say. I'm a bit out of date, but but that you've changed the, the field, I think, of directing you and some other people who are really passionate about the theatre. Uh, and then really including movement. I think you've changed the field, so it may not be up on a stage anymore, but a much bigger stage or something like that. Yeah. Oh, these things happen. Somebody said, which was great, in my class, one of my groups yesterday, we had a bit of a glitch with Zoom and Tractor. And um, somebody said, the thing that they had got the most out of the evening was how me and my team handled the glitch and we right. did everything. So let's hope something like that is true now, since it's already happened. What's that poem? I think you like it. Um, forget oh, your per forget yeah. your perfect offering or something. Yeah, Leonard Cohen, isn't it? It's a, something like, um, ring the bells that still can ring. And I love that. It's like, go for what still rings. 
ring the bells that still can ring, forget your perfect offering. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. I love it. Yeah, thanks. We've been using poetry a lot in these online Zoomy things. I've been using poetry a lot. It's been part of the uh, delight. For me, it's a little bit like the um, installation almost kind of opens up a little bridge between one way of thinking and one way of hearing and introduces another. I love it. I'm really loving this um, opportunity to use poetry as an mm -hmm. installation. Yes, yes. It is interesting, isn't it, how the a change of the, the form invites new creativity. Unbelievably. Way more than I thought was possible. I really... I'm really appreciating it. The whole time, you know, ever since we stepped onto this field of dancing, Andrew, there's just, um, I suppose it's true all the time in life. It just makes me more aware of it. I clock it more. I'm less afraid of saying words like love or spirit or God or consciousness. I'm still very wary of using them in some ways, but I'm not afraid of using them. It's just... That's one of the biggest changes for me, uh, looking back over however long it's been, 25 years or something, mm -hmm. is, is that, that willingness to, to name those qualities. And maybe, I think, sometimes I think it's, it's that if I had talked about that at the beginning, I somehow wasn't embodying it sufficiently to, to do that with the real confidence or authority or genuineness or something. Um, but now it just comes all the time. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. And it's not, not just us. I think it, uh, I think it, well, I hope it does. It puts the language squarely back in on the map for, for all of us, for, uh, whether we're teaching or not. That language, even if you're saying, I disagree, I don't like, or what does this mean? It give, brings the language back in. It, Whatever the opposite of impoverishing language is, it's that enriches our shared language. I like that a lot. While we're looking back for a moment, do you have a memory of Gabrielle that somehow catches what you remember of her? <laughs> I'm, I'm only, at the moment, I'm only having inappropriate <laughs> which is quite Gabrielle. Um, no, but if one comes, I'll, I'll let you know. But it sounds like you might have, but you've got a much clearer memory than me. I don't, yeah, maybe. But the, the, the thing about Gabrielle was everybody met her differently or she met everyone differently mm. she had that extraordinary quality of you could be in a room with 200 dancers quite often there were 200 dancers and yet you felt like she was talking directly and personally just to you and um and I think that is sort of somehow true in the way everybody met her so for some people she was really scary and for some people she was really this or that or the other and and for with for me somehow she was she always felt like um like a sort of young woman you know like a a, a 20 year old uh slightly shy um totally um ethereal like you could you when i whenever i hugged her it was like your arms would just keep going <laughs> there was so there was nothing there um yeah, yeah. uh very sweet um uh the image in my mind is just meeting her on the path at Esselen as i was coming down from accommodation and she was going up from lunch or something and just just a, a moment in passing of of this yeah this maiden um who must have been 55 at the time or something i don't know yeah that's really nice <laughs> that's really nice yeah I mean 
I mean, she was something really, really special, wasn't she? And also really, really ordinary. And I liked that in lots of ways. I remember now I'm having a memory, and I hope this is all right with Kathy and Laurie for me to, to say this, because it involves them. But I remember I was in um, in a, some sort of hot tubby place uh, with Kathy and Laurie, and um, Gabrielle was ill. It wasn't the last illness that she died, but she, she was very, very ill. And we, people were quite worried about how, whether she would recover, and she did. Um, but being in the sauna with Kathy and Laurie and just coming out and them saying, we had been talking about being concerned about Gabrielle's health and thinking of her and la la la. And then saying, do you know, they can, wouldn't you just wish her to ring it? Cause she hadn't been well enough to ring or anything. Wouldn't you just wish her well enough to ring up? Even if she, all she did was complain about something, the phone rang. It was Gabrielle. Where are you when I need you? <laughs> Kathy and Laurie were laughing. <laughs> we, we did ask for it. And they're just like, Gabrielle, it's really great to hear you back on form. What do you need? You know, and it was really, I love those little things that happen. I love them. Yeah. So, Sue, you, earlier you said, oh, well, I don't teach movement. So what do you teach? What do I teach? Do I teach? What I like to imagine in this moment, I would probably say something a bit different another time, but in this moment, what I like to think is that I put all my skills into reminding us who we are and definitely it's that thing of teaching what you need to know so I think a lot of the time I'm reminding uh, reminding 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 that we can move that life can move through us that we can sense things that we're all right that we're not walking around wrong in so many ways that Reminding people and myself of the all rightness of life moving through us and the kind of the beauty of simple honesty, undefended, simple honesty, and how each step we take, whether that's physically or kind of a bit more metaphorically, each step we take lets us see something fresh and new we don't have to know the future we only need to give what we can in this moment take what we need give what we can and then we're in another place and then someone else or something else or a track or the light will shine and something that wasn't possible one moment ago is suddenly possible this moment i love this reminding us really how natural we are but, you know, we're natural beings. We do a lot of unnatural things, but that we're natural beings. And and a lot of that I get from, you know, now Fanny and Colin being my teachers, movement of being and... Um, but it, I would say a lot of it started getting switched back on when I started moving. So that's a kind of teaching. It's more of a suggesting and a reminding, I think, that I do. And then sometimes, especially in my close groups, I'll bring a specific thing that I want to teach. And because of all our trainings and because of my natural uh, inclination, I don't find it very difficult to think of ways of, well, how could we bring that through the body? How can we really, if I'm teaching, I don't teach very cerebrally. Uh, and I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun. And if it's not working, people tell me, and then we adjust, and it's very alive. I like it. So occasionally I'll bring something to teach, but mostly I think I'm a reminder and an encourager. Miss it. I've been in your classes, Andrew. You teach with such care and precision, among other things, but you really do. You're, you're like an, a, 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 almost another species when I see you step into that. I love it. 
thank you <laughs> permissive is the word that comes to my mind when you're naming those qualities in you that 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 place of just saying yes to to people saying yes to people as they are uh, as the, uh, and that that's somehow really encouraging and supportive allows people to kind of blossom oh, I hope so. yeah and how do you do it oh it's it's from drinking at very good wells i mean the ah. stuff i'm doing with movement of being with Annie and colin it's drink like drinking long drafts of nectar even when it's challenging and it sometimes is you know and reading and dancing and being in good company uh and then i don't seem to need to do so much as uh see what pours out but i feel like my job is to keep drinking hmm. in and then a bit like a good teapot the slightest little tip and it will pour out and uh i love you know for instance the workshops fire we we, we used to do these um pre-covid days and will again i hope um, working with a, a fantastic team of people um where we met and met and met again had a sweat lodge in the middle and the whole thing we would only have the loosest preparation lots of it but the loosest preparation so that we could go this way or that way rachel would read a story killian would play some music becca would bring a piece of inspiration in here we hold the sweat lodge and none of us the whole team knew where we were going we would uh it's such a pleasure it's it's total creativity in the moment so it's a pleasure for me when people say oh i like your teeth no, it's a pleasure it is mm -hmm. some of the admin in the background and the brain work that it requires different brain work that it requires which is more than people think that i don't find so easy um or so pleasurable it's all all right but the actual stepping onto the dance floor and being with people or on zoom i'm loving that um, <laughs> I do. I feel like, you know, I'm a little teapot. Just tip me a little bit and something will come out, if, especially if I make sure that I remain reasonably full. A bit harder to get anything out if I'm, if I'm tired and drained. And, and, and are you the sort of teacher that where things happen in the space just because you've turned up? In the way that Gabrielle was, are you a, are you catalytic? Is there something about your presence energetically that that allows something to happen in the field? Do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think that's true of most of us in, in different ways, um, mm. and I think people can sense what you can hold, and they don't ask me to hold more than I can, which is a lot. Um, but for instance, when my mum and dad died years ago, as you well know, but when my mum and dad died. Which was a really really fucking tough time um shortly after that more and more people were bringing their grief onto the dance floor and it was always been there but people can sense what you can handle i think and use it at some very very subtle level that has not anything to do with intention it's just there so i think we all catalyze what what we can handle at least touch wood people don't bring more than i can hold but they mm. always bring the limits of what i can hold that will stretch and i love that that's that's a privilege mm. i know you're a catalyst because i've been on your dance floors huh. that's interesting and good to hear i i think of myself as a sort of like a guide mm. Uh, that's my style there's somewhere there's somewhere beautiful in the mountains that i that i've been and i'd like to take you <laughs> and in order to get there it, it, the journey has to be really well planned and prepared <laughs> we need specific equipment <laughs> and we have to keep going in that direction for three and a half hours otherwise we won't get there and be able to get back in time um that's that's how I sort of that's that's what my teaching feels like, like a, yeah. a guy walk in the mountains. Well, because it's genuine, Andrew, because that's what you're like, isn't it? So I think you're going to uh, you're going to attract mountaineers and <laughs> Sherpas 
and campers and you're going to attract I remember you and I have done that do you remember when we were in Yosemite after one of the trainings and yes. it was really really snowy really so much snow and ice around and you said no we can do this I'm going, oh what if we fall through the cracks in the ice on the snow and you said we probably won't come on <laughs> oh, oh Andrew wait for me <laughs> it's really true I would have stayed down in the camp around the barbecue singing songs but I followed you up that mountain I really did it was amazing yeah yeah, yeah. it was that's really true of the way you teach and I think that's your that's you catalyzing it's a it's just a but it, I'm struck by what you say it's it's a different way of of offering from the well of uh, of our own experience isn't it it's like um all i'm really wanting to do when i teach is actually i think what i'm increasingly wanting to do or today's answer anyway is i'm wanting to to help people cut through unnecessary suffering mm -hmm. that's what it feels like it feels like um in, over the last 10 years I've become more and more Buddhist tinged in my teaching I can't claim to be a, mm -hmm. a practicing Buddhist but that's what I that's what I read a lot of and study and sometimes sit with teachers of and um, yeah there's just something about cultivating this enough self-knowledge enough to 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 drop that particular piece it's like, yeah. like i love that saying um susanna used to quote it know yourself uh for find yourself that's half the way to god then lose yourself mm. and all the way is trod or, or completed or whatever and a less difficult english word would be trod sounds uh, lovely as it rhymes mm. And um, and increasingly, it's the losing that I that I'm teaching. Yeah, you know, yeah, in yeah. five rhythms terms, it's lyrical and stillness that draw me, um, uh, rather than chaos, which is what got me hooked in the first place, and yeah. flowing that I struggled with for so many years. <laughs> Staccato that that you know that comes very naturally to me. Yeah. Like the, the, something about the the furthest reaches i wonder if it's to I do, do remember with our ages. sorry andrew carry on to do with our age mm. yes but i remember actually being 20 or no not even that 17 i think or 18 i was in australia um on my own and i went on a sort of um one of those guided trucks around the outback for a week kind of trips to Uluru or AS Rock as it was called in those days and and I remember uh, we had sort of two hours somewhere and I remember walking as far as I possibly could in the time that was available to get a glimpse down into the next valley uh, over the red sandstone rocks and then having to run back while everybody on the bus was waiting for me <laughs> that, that sense of just you know like wanting to go to the edge and have a look uh, oh yeah i love how i'm going oh yeah a lot to what you're saying and you've been nodding sometimes while i'm speaking i love how different we are and how we're both looking in pointing in the same direction and actually how i think all all of us do that dancers teachers teacher dance there's an element of being drawn as well each in our own very particular way called come 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 move dance room you know and um and just as you were saying i was thinking how glorious that we are so different one of the things that I really like about Open Floor, for instance, was that it was um, born of a whole group of people representing an even bigger group of people, pooling everything they knew and then teasing out, well, what's particular to one person, but what's universal to us all? Um, with all our differences, what's universal? 
that's that will be the ground in a way and the collective wisdom of that and i love it and i love that that's what we're is one of the thick reasons i really love being part of the icmta that yeah, you would do yeah. things one way i would do it another someone else would do it another and then we pour that wisdom if it is wisdom help ourselves and each other see blind spots and create something that none of us could do on our own i'm really enjoying that aspect of us talk, us two talking because we're so different in so many ways but our hearts are beating to the same drum i think yes and you know that that sort of sociological experiment that that sometimes gets done where you put a big group of people in a room and ask them to kind of yeah go and stand next to somebody that they feel something some connection with and and people end up with the people who have the same background or the same story as them like you know they went to the same kind of school or they suffered the same kind of trauma as a child or they their second children and their draw you know the, 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 we so we have that very natural thing of being drawn towards the people that are like us and what i love about the dance is that we're all drawn to the the sort of mystery at the center of the circle yeah and so you and i who might never have found ourselves ordinarily end up sitting side by side and getting to know each other mm. over all these years mm. Um, mm. and that's beautiful yeah 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 the amount of people on the dance floors that you would never cross paths with otherwise that's phenomenal isn't it yeah i remember what I was, in um, Denmark once and I, I said something about, you know, we need to get the politicians on the dance floor and they turned me and said, oh, they're here. Uh, and the couple of people went, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Some quite, you know, big shots. They're here. Uh, Just blew my heart wide uh, open. It's like, wow. What do you think's changed in you over all these years of teaching? I guess my trust in what we're doing has grown. I maybe my trust in myself, but I'm not sure that it's entirely true because that's always come and gone. I can go between being full of doubt and full of confidence, and both are true. But um, maybe with experience, even though I may not like when things don't go according to my ideas or technical hitches may not like them but the trust that we're in it together that I'm not trying to for instance save a group or save anyone in a group that we're in it together and what we create is what we create and I have my role and I will give it 100% but that's still my role and we're in it together I think I have more and more at least on a good day and there are quite a lot of them more trust in the whole unfolding and we do need good teachers i need good teachers i really mm. really really need to be taught well and know what it feels like to be loved in my case and encouraged and challenged in the least harmful most growthful ways i need that otherwise i think i really would have put down my um, laptop top many many years ago um, and that there's more there's more and there's more and there's more and there's more and, uh, in some ways I still feel like such a beginner and I know that's a oh. bit of a cliche but I really feel it I, I feel wow look if I followed you up a mountain and but I look oh Andrew I thought this was the peak and you go oh no it's just a pass <laughs> look at that Mm. it's a nice question though I would, don't think I would ever ask myself it do you think about that no not very often but but I I'm aware I I guess I think that's the thing I find hardest to remember as a teacher I have to consciously do it to remember what it was like to be a beginner on the oh. dance floor you know like to 
to remember oh god yes of course people may be feeling that or seeing that or thinking that about me the teacher or um um I think the two things that for me I would say have changed, I really resonate with that thing you, I, my way of saying what you've just said would be at some point I just stopped worrying about whether I was cool um, <laughs> <laughs> or, or whether I was doing it well or um, in a way just stop bothering about, about Andrew that's part of big part of my whole life's mission actually i'm just i say to my groups from time to time i'm so bored with with being andrew <laughs> i really don't need to insist on that any longer or, <laughs> or spend much yeah, time yeah. contemplating it you know like the andrewness of andrew is is a given and i'm not let's let's not pay my like let's not pay any more attention to that um so there's something and when you said you said about you know about so so yes it's not that it stops being scary or edgy or sometimes painful or embarrassing or you know any of those things it's it's just that that you just do it anyway <laughs> you just learn to hold all those feelings and uh, alex mckay once said show up see and serve oh, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the job of the teacher and uh and and I think that's that's right. Yeah. Um, what about on the dance floor? Has the, have you it, had it? Has that changed? Has has your dance floor changed? Oh, yeah. And if I'm really honest, right in this moment, I liked it when I was younger and more limp. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember really, literally getting someone to lift me up to the rafters so that I could swing with my legs over the rafters and hang upside down as part of the dance which probably would never pass health and safety anymore but um and just dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing i would get really tired but my body would repair itself enough for the next day if i dance like that now it takes days to repair it just does it just does so i miss that my body physically at 64 can't do what it did at 34. Um, I think I started dancing when I was about 30, something like that. Having said that, having said that, there are times when the subtlety of the movement, of a movement, mm. will carry me, uh, you know, like a feather on the wind, you know, like the subtlety of a movement, for instance, or a sudden stamp or a thrust when I don't expect it, when I'm not trying, when I'm not, you know, really using a young body to squeeze every drop of experience out of everything. Um, they're precious and I value them more. I might not even have noticed them 20, 30 years ago. And now I go, oh, what was that? Or, you know, boom! Ah, oh, here we are. I don't have the muscles to do it anymore, but the life force, same. I, I think so. I think I, I have to appreciate what an older body brings. Um, and it's a loss in many ways, but not an insurmountable loss. It's a loss that leads me into a, into another era really another another way of being here on the planet in a different kind of body that is so valuable so and i can't think of an exact experience now but they've been happening recently i know so i'm speaking from there mm. yes it's part of that that movement towards stillness that we touched on earlier for me I feel like I'm a little younger than you, not much, but a little. It, I, I feel like, um, well, I really want to carry on doing this, but not just the teaching, but the dancing also for, um, you know, well, forever, preferably. <laughs> uh, I, I, I sometimes see in my mind's eye those sort of 
very old ballet mistresses in their 90s oh, yeah. names, like Miss Julie or Miss Judy or <laughs> something who just sit on a tall chair with a cane and kind of tap the floor and make everybody listen uh, um, and I think well I could probably do that when I'm 95 if, I, if I'm still here so so something about the adventure I suppose of learning to dance differently um, uh, it feels like I don't know, you know, like when you work with the emotions and when you're first finding something that you're not very good at expressing or being with or being comfortable with, you, you, you have to kind of almost exaggerate and go to the max to, to get a sense of, of it. And then gradually it, it becomes more and more um, digested or incorporated, uh, embodied. And, and then you can just just a little flavor just a little whisper is enough it's like there it is so I feel like that about my dance in a way that it that that, that I used to have to dance really big and wild to mm. to kind of find myself or find that place or mm. or something and now I can just ripple the shoulder and whoop, there we are yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really beautiful. As you're speaking, I'm remembering, you know, when you go to, uh, I haven't been to Latin America, but you know, when you go to Mediterranean countries and um, I was in Portugal years back now, but there was a kind of street festival thingy going on and um, everyone was dancing. The kids were running around dancing, dogs were barking. My idea of heaven, dogs were barking, kids were running around, but also dancing and, I mean, and then the, t the teenagers which everyone's kind of like, oh and then they drop out well no they weren't they were dancing with each other la 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 some of them were dancing with older people all the way through to really what people who look to me to be in their 80s or 90s really moving beautifully it's a whole different move but really really absolutely as taken by the dance i imagine as they ever were uh, yeah I'm wishing oh. myself. I think I'm heading there. Isn't that lovely to talk to one's colleagues about the thing that we love? Isn't it? And I can just feel my whole heart and my body is so warmed by spending some time talking about this with you. <laughs> you know what, though, Andrew? You're saying that. This wasn't planned, was it? But it's um, four minutes till the next ICMTA meeting that we're on. <laughs> <laughs> so we've completely overrun the time we thought we would maybe spend chatting and I could easily go on for an hour but we'll is, be a bit unpopular if we do is there anything you'd like to say and in, 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 in... Well, it is to kind of reminisce and ramble and not try to say anything in particular just see what comes up to be said you know as you know I was a bit resistant about oh Andrew really and now look at me enjoying really enjoying being here chatting with you and hoping it will touch someone or be of benefit but if it doesn't I've really enjoyed myself so. <laughs> well me too thank you so much